she brought not only her brilliant voice, which just seemed to fit perfectly with the look and the feel of the character, but she has a real great way of of downplaying the way you, you would think Wednesday should downplay things, but also carrying through a lot of emotion and a lot of internal thought. Morticia, played by Charlize Theron. Um, I wanted her to play Morticia from day one. I just, I, I watched a few of her movies and just listened to the voice and I was like, that's, that's Morticia. It's like, for some reason, the timber of her voice comes through that tall, slender character perfectly. And, uh, and it was no easy feat, you know, figuring out how to do a, a mid-Atlantic accent and not make it sound British or too American, but to ride that line, which she does brilliantly, and, and, uh, and also, you know, be a dark and brooding yet caring mother. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, she, she pulled it off beautifully. Gomez is played by Oscar Isaac, and uh, just the way he gives that, um, that excitement of life and that, 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 that sheer love of the macabre and, uh, and, and you know, the utter family man. Uh, just absolutely loves his family and loves being around them. Um, you know, that kind of excitement comes out really great with Oscar, and, and Oscar loves to, you know, play with the lines and improv, and, and uh, you know, his accent that he brought to, to Gomez is, is, is perfect. It's really spot on. Fester, played by Nick Kroll, has uh, two roles in this film. The number one is to teach Pugsley the ways of love. The other one is he's in the middle of a transformation that uh, Wednesday has uh, used him as a, a science experiment and over the course of the film slowly turns into an octopus, uh, which these creatures are much more intelligent than Fester. So not only does he become a little more intelligent, but he actually starts to grow tentacles and turn purple and becomes the unwitting hero of the movie, so. Cyrus Strange, played by Bill Hader. Uh, it was great to work with Bill, it was fantastic. And you know, uh, whenever we recorded with him, he'd say, can I hear what I did with the voice uh, for Cyrus? And we'd play it and he'd go, oh, well that's just my voice. But luckily, his voice is fantastic, and uh, you know, and the way that he says the lines is hilarious and funny. And so, didn't need to put on any uh, different type of voice for this character. He just uh, he could just come out and do his own voice. But um, but uh, he does switch it up in the end. I will say that I don't want to give away the end of the movie, but he had to switch up his voice a lot in the end of the movie. But the way he said things and the and the improv that he gave us was really funny. Cousin It, well, that's uh, played by Snoop Dogg. And what we did on the first movie with him is we figured to get that, that, um, that nonsense, you know, garble that he speaks, we just took Snoop's lines and we reversed them and sped them up. Um, and, uh, and the stuff that we thought we were gonna record, which were rhymes, didn't turn out correctly because they were too, they had a meter to them. So it didn't sound just like Gerbil, it just sounded like ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba ba it was, it was too metered. So they actually took uh, some dialogue <laughs> from Snoop and I talking about the Lakers, and they just reversed that and sped it up, and we used that. This time around, we wanted to write him some lines. So the lines that he has are actually funny lines that have to do with the story, and we recorded those and sped them up and played them backwards. It's kind of like an Easter egg for people to to kind of go in and, and see what he actually says if they want to. The kids are growing up and Gomez is realizing that they are starting to want to pull away from the family unit and find their own way in the world. 
Gomez, of course, you know, his first reaction is to want to pull them back in and hold them close. So he decides that the best way to do that is to stick everyone in the family camper and go on a road trip. While we're out on this road trip, though, we find out that uh, there might have been a mix-up at the hospital when Wednesday was an infant, and she might have been sent home with them, uh, and uh, the other baby might have been sent home, which was actually theirs, might have been sent home with someone else. So along this road trip, they're also trying to figure out if Wednesday is actually an Adams or if she is a Strange, which is our villain of the movie. Everyone's family has a weirdness to it. Everyone's family has a kook in it. Everyone's family, you know, uh, has their own specific way of, of, of behaving behind closed doors. And I think when you look at the Adams family, the, the most odd family that you've ever seen, you're going to find at least pieces in there that you can relate to and say, oh, yeah, that's, that's a lot like my family, too. And, you know, above all the, or beneath all the, the ooky-kooky spookiness of the family, you know, they're still a loving family. 